Hello, this is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com and today we're going to be starting our platformer tutorial. To get started, what you want to do is go over to Kenny.nl, that's K-E-N-N-E-Y.nl. He's got some wonderful free assets. If you click on assets, then click on 2D, you should find the platformer pack redux you want to download that and copy it to some place I put it here on my desktop but you can put it wherever you feel most comfortable once you have that you're ready to go so go ahead and launch game salad we're going to create a new project I'm going to go ahead and call this project platformer tutorial 001 we're going to change the platform to iPad, land, iPad Landscape. And now we're going to start off by creating some actors. So for the first actor we're going to create, we're going to call Player. The second one, which we're actually going to be using in the later episode, is going to be called Player Image. We're also going to create one called Platform. And now we're going to create one called Motion Controller. Okay, the Motion Controller is actually going to control the keyboard keys and possibly if we wanted to add joystick, we can keep them all in one place. But to do that, we need to Go into Scenes, open up our initial scene, go to Attributes. We're going to have to add some game attributes. The first one is going to be a Boolean, and we're going to call it Button Left. I'll create another Boolean called Button Right, and a final Boolean called Button jump. Now we're also going to create some integers. The first one is our max jumps. We're going to set that to 1 right away. And that's how many times the player can jump. Now we're going to create a new one called player jump going to get set whenever he jumps. Now we're going to set one for player direction. And now two more. Go ahead and create both of them. One we're going to be called player speed. This is how fast the player will move. We're going to set that to 200. And this final one is going to be called player jump whoop, jump height. I'm going to set that to eh, just for fun. We're going to set it for 500. And now we just have to create two reels. And these are going to keep track of our player X. And player Y. Now that we have those game attributes, we're going to go ahead and file. We're going to save this as Platformer Tutorial 001. Now let's already have one, so I'm going to replace it. Let's go ahead and expand, if you haven't already, your game salad screen. Now let's go to home. We're going to click on the actors. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the motion controller. So we need to create some rules. Okay, we're going to follow this first rule left. That's going to control left button movement. So when the actor, in this case the motion controller, receives a key, and we're going to say key A because I like the WASD keys. So A is going to be left. 
So when that's down, we're going to do a change attribute. And we're going to set game, the attribute we just created, button left to true. Now we're going to use Alt or Option to click and drag this rule down below, this behavior down below. And if the key is down, we want the button to be true. But if it's not down, we want the button to be false. Okay. Now we're going to do that same option or Alt, click and drag to create a new rule. And this one we're going to call right. We're going to change this key from A to D. Now this is going to be the right key. So we need to change this to game button right. It remains true. But over here, we also have to change this to game button right to false. So when the D key is pressed down, button right becomes true. Otherwise, it's false. Now we just have one more key to take care of, and that's our jump key. So I'm just going to actually let's not replicate this rule at all. Let's create a new rule. And we're going to say when key is space. I'm not sure how that got into that rule. So when they press the space key, we're going to change attribute game button jump to true. Otherwise, again, drag and duplicate. We're going to set button jump to false. So this motion controller is just going to control the motion. So it's going to keep track of which buttons we press. We're going to go ahead and change this rule to jump. And what happens when we press them. And it's just going to set those game attributes so we can handle those within the player object. So I'm going to just change this color to yellow. And then I'm going to add a change attribute up here at the top. And I'm going to say set motion controller color alpha to zero. And basically what that do, will do is make this effectively invisible. We'll be able to see it in our preview, but as soon as we run the game or preview the game, it'll become invisible. That way we can drag it onto the screen, but we'll know it's there, but it won't show up when we're playing. All right, so let's go back home. Now we have the motion set up, so let's go ahead into player. And we're going to change the size of the player to 64 by 128. We're going to change the color to green so he's nice and bright. Now again, let's go ahead and file save. It's a good idea to get into the practice of saving often. Now we need to create some rules. The first rule we need to do is because this is a platformer game, we want him to have gravity. So he's going to fall down the screen along the Y coordinate. Y is up and down. X is left and right. So we want to give him an accelerate behavior. We'll call this gravity. The direction is going to be 270, which if you look when I click here, down. You can also use this dial, but I think it's more accurate to just type it in. The acceleration, we're going to set to 800, and we're going to say it's relative to the scene. Okay, so that means he's going to drop straight down, unless he bumps into something, like a platform. Now we need to put the rules to handle the movement. So I'm going to call this first one left and we're going to say when attribute game this is that button that we set in the motion controller button left is true 
Now, this could cause some problems if you just leave it like this. So I'm going to add a second rule. I'm going to say when attribute game button right is false. So button left has to be true. Button right has to be false. This eliminates them pressing two buttons and your logic not knowing what to do. So when this happens, what we're going to do is we're going to constrain player motion linear velocity x, remember x is left and right, to, now remember left, he's moving from right to left, and the coordinate system starts at zero on the left and gets greater as you go to the right. So we want to do a negative game player speed. So in this case, player speed is 200, so this will set it to negative 200, which means he'll move to the left. Now, if this is not true, we want to change attribute player motion linear velocity x to 0 so both of so left is true and right is false we want to set it to negative player game speed otherwise we want to set it to 0 now we made that rule we're going to again do the alt slash option click and drag to duplicate it we're going to rename this new one right now instead of we're basically going to swap these around because this is for the right so when the button left is false and button right is true we're going to change this all we're really going to do is just come in here and get rid of this negative sign because we want it to go right which is a positive player speed and again we're going to set it to zero if this is not the case now we also need to account for two other conditions we're going to call this neither and this is when both of these are false and what we're going to do is I'm going to actually get rid of this rule and we're going to drag copy this rule up actually we could just drag it because we don't need an, an else here so as both of these are false we're going to set it to zero and the other condition is both if for some reason they have if they're pressing both keys we're not going to know which way to go so we're just going to set it to zero basically that's going to stop us so we have left right neither button is pressed both buttons are pressed let's go ahead and file and save and the only other thing we need to do is set up our jump rule so we're going to say when attribute player I'm sorry game player jump or button jump sorry button jump is true and rename this jump what we're going to do is change attribute we're going to set the player motion linear velocity y to in this case we already have the player jump height okay and the only other thing we're going to do is we're going to get another change attribute and so that this is not processed again because we only want them to jump once per button press we're going to go ahead and set game button jump to false so this is the basic player movement I'm going to file save and come back to home we're going to platform first thing I want to do is change the height and width to 64 so we have a height and width of 64 now if you went ahead and downloaded that pack you can go into the pack and you should see ground okay and underground we can go to grass 
I'm just going to click on this grass. I'm going to drag it over and drop it in here. So now I have a graphic there. Okay. Now we want this, if we expand this platform actor, we want it to basically duplicate this graphic. So we're going to do that under graphics. I'm going to set horizontal wrap to tile and horizontal or vertical wrap to tile. And we're going to leave the tile width and tile height at 64. So let's go ahead and file and save. We're going to go home. We're going to go to our scenes. We're going to open up our scene. The first thing we're going to do is create a platform down here at the bottom. And you can start it slightly off the screen and drag it. Notice how it tiles now all the way off the screen here. So that's our bottom level. Now let's go ahead and create an extra platform and then one more here at the top. We'll move this one over here. Actually, let's do that in reverse. Let's put this one over here. Let's make it a small one. And we'll just move this. This one here. There we go. Now we'll put our player actor right here at the top so he'll fall down. And let's see how this works. I'll give you a hint. It's not going to work the way we expect. And I'll show you why. If you hit preview, and there the player goes. Falling forever to the center of the earth. And why did you do that? Because we have no collide rule. This player doesn't know that it should collide with the platform. So you can come down here to the behavior and we're going to put this at the top. I'm going to say to collide. So it's going to bounce when colliding with actor of type platform. Now we'll see what happens. And again, I'll give you a hint. It's not going to be what you expect. Think Angry Birds. Hit, boom, boom, oh, crash, boom, there he goes, oh, there goes our platform. And they're all falling to the bottom, center of the earth. So what happened? Well, a couple things happened. Number one, if we go into Actors and Platform, when you hit, it begins to initiate the physics on this object. So the first thing we need to do is change this density to 999-9999. You can go ahead and change the friction to zero. And we're going to change fixed rotation. And we're also going to unclick movable. Basically that, those platforms are not going to move. So now I'm going to file save. We're going to hit preview. And there he is. It's not dropping. We're not having that Angry Birds physics effect, but he's just bouncing forever happily there. Boing, boing. And that's really not what we want. So let's click on it. And to control the bounciness, you have to control it on two objects the object that's being impacted and the object that's doing the impacting. So we're going to change the bounciness of the platform to zero and we're going to change the bounciness of the player object to 0.1. It's going to give it a slight bit of bounce. Now we're also going to change the density to zero and we're going to go ahead and change the fixed rotation otherwise he'll, well, you know, let's just show you what he'll do. So I'm going to hit preview. Now notice how he falls, lands on the platform. Now if you try to use your keys at this point, they're not going to work. And the reason why is because we never moved this motion controller. So there's nothing telling us setting that button right, button left. So let's go ahead and put that here. We can put it anywhere we want. Again, it's going to turn itself invisible. Whoop. Let's go ahead and hit preview. And there we go. See, it's here, but it's not here. Now, you can move your right, you can move left. I'm going to drop them down and 
I'm going to hit space. You can jump, and off we go. And there we are. Now, he's pretty much falling straight, but let's just come in here and give him fixed rotation as well. Let's go back. We're going to hit preview. And there you have the very basics of a platformer. Boink. Now, we're going to be building on this basis um, through the other episodes. So if you do not have this file, uh, you can download it from our website, monkeyuncle.com. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Again, this is John with monkeyuncle.com.